the Red Terror, a reign of violence in revolutionary Russia. The year is 1918. In the chaos that followed the October Revolution of 1917, Russia was on the verge of a deeper conflict. The new Bolshevik regime, led by Lenin, was under siege from multiple fronts, political rivals, disgruntled peasants, and the threat of an impending civil war. The Bolsheviks, determined to maintain their tenuous grip on power, unleashed a campaign of unprecedented state-sanctioned violence known as the Red Terror. This was not a subtle response. It was a violent answer to those who opposed the revolution, a ferocious attempt to crush counter-revolutionaries and root out enemies, both real and imagined. The streets of Russia's cities would soon be soaked in the blood of dissidents, and fear would become the currency of control. The seeds of terror, origins and context. The Bolshevik dream of a proletarian revolution was born in the industrial heartlands of Russia, where support for the October Revolution was strongest. However, outside the factories of Petrograd and Moscow, that dream found fewer believers. In the rural areas and smaller towns, the Bolsheviks faced mounting opposition. By the summer of 1918, resistance to Lenin's regime reached a boiling point. The closure of the Constituent Assembly in January 1918, a democratically elected body representing all political parties, infuriated many, as did the bresley torfs Treaty of March 1918, which ceded vast tracts of Russian land to the Germans in return for peace. Then came the revolt of the Czech Legion in May, which saw thousands of anti-Bolshevik soldiers stranded in Russia join the White Army, further inflaming tensions. The final straw was the policy of war communism, a draconian system that allowed the state to requisition grain from peasants to feed the cities and the Red Army. The peasants resisted, refusing to hand over their hard-earned harvests while the cities starved. It was a period of widespread disillusionment with the Bolsheviks, and many believed another revolution could be brewing. This mounting wave of opposition created an atmosphere of fear and paranoia within the Bolshevik leadership, leading to the birth of the Red Terror. The assassination attempts, a catalyst for ruthlessness, the Red Terror did not begin with a single edict or decree. Instead, it was born of blood, fear and political assassination. In August 1918, the flames of terror were ignited by two critical events. First, in Petrograd, Moisei Yuritsky, the local Cheka chief, was gunned down by a young officer, Leonid Kanigaiser, who sought revenge for the execution of a close friend. The murder of a high-ranking Bolshevik was a brazen act of defiance. But a more shocking event would follow, just days later, as Lenin visited a Moscow factory, a young socialist revolutionary, Fonya Kaplan, emerged from the crowd. With a trembling hand and the weight of a thousand grievances on her shoulders, Kaplan fired two shots into Lenin's body, hitting him in the chest and shoulder. Lenin survived, but the attack shook the regime to its core. Kaplan was captured, interrogated, and tortured by the Bolsheviks. Her motive was simple. She viewed Lenin as a traitor to the revolution. His signing of the Brest-Litovsk Treaty and the dissolution of the Constituent Assembly were, in her mind, unforgivable crimes. I do not think I succeeded in killing him, she later wrote. If I regret anything, it is only that. Kaplan's failed assassination attempt was the final spark. Lenin, now more paranoid than ever, demanded swift retribution. On August 9, 1918, he sent his infamous hanging order, commanding that 100 rebellious peasants in Penza be publicly executed as a deterrent to future uprisings. The stage was set for the Red Terror. Class warfare, the bloodletting Bagins. In the immediate aftermath of the assassination attempts, the Bolsheviks tightened their grip on power through sheer terror. Lenin, supported by his inner circle and the leader of the Cheka, Felix Jasinski, ordered the Cheka, 
known as the secret police, to systematically hunt down and eliminate all those they viewed as enemies of the revolution. On September 5, 1918, the Central Committee of the Communist Party officially sanctioned the Red Terror. The Cheka was tasked with rounding up counter-revolutionaries, class enemies, and suspected dissidents. These enemies included members of rival political groups like the social revolutionaries, Mensheviks, Whites, and anyone associated with the old Tsarist regime. But the terror did not stop at political opponents. The Bolsheviks expanded their definition of enemies to include virtually anyone, liberals, Kulaks wealthy peasants, industrial workers who did not meet production quotas, and even church leaders. It became a war not just of ideas, but of classes. The Bolsheviks sought to eradicate the bourgeoisie entirely. Martin Latzis, a leading Cheka commander, described the terror as class warfare at its most extreme. We are destroying the bourgeoisie as a class, he declared. In October 1918, a pro-Bolshevik newspaper demanded a flood of bourgeois blood in retaliation for the assassination attempts on Lenin and Yuritsky. The Cheka, which had started with only a few hundred men in early 1918, quickly grew into a sprawling organization with over 200,000 agents by 1920. These agents roamed the streets, making arrests, conducting summary executions, and spreading fear across the country. Methods of Terror – From Fear to Torture The methods of the Red Terror were as ruthless as they were varied. Many of the arrested were sent to Kotorgas, the notorious labor camps that had been used under the Tsarist regime. These labor camps would later evolve into Stalin's infamous Gulag system. But for many, the camps were not the final destination. Thousands of people were subjected to summary executions, often without trial. People were lined up in public squares, forced to dig their own graves, and then shot. The sheer brutality of the executions was meant to instill fear, not only in the victims, but in the wider population, torture was common. Dissidents and suspected counter-revolutionaries were subjected to horrendous acts to extract confessions or simply to punish them. No one was safe from the Cheka's grasp. Wearing bourgeois clothing or making a joke about the Bolsheviks could be enough to get one arrested. Even unintentional actions, like a scornful glance or an offhand comment about the regime, could land an individual in a labor camp, or worse. The human cost, a nation in fear, the full scale of the Red Terror's human cost is hard to quantify. The official numbers provided by the Bolsheviks indicated that 8,500 people were executed in the first year of the terror. However, historians believe the real number is much higher, possibly as many as 100,000 executions during the terror's peak. But these figures do not capture the full extent of the suffering. For every person executed, there were tens of thousands more who were arrested, tortured, or sent to labor camps. The terror left deep scars on Russian society, as ordinary citizens lived in constant fear of being denounced as counter-revolutionaries or class enemies. Debating the Red Terror, was it inevitable? Historians continue to debate the nature of the Red Terror. Was it a necessary evil, a desperate response to the real threat of counter-revolutionary forces? Or was it an inevitable consequence of the Bolsheviks' ideology, which emphasized class warfare and coercion as tools of governance? Many scholars argue that terrorism was inherent in Bolshevik ideology. The revolutionaries, they claim, were shaped by a history of violence and insurrection, and once they seized power, they could only hold on to it through fear and brutality. Others suggest that the terror was a reaction to a very real threat of civil war, a calculated move to eliminate enemies before they could topple the fragile regime. Whatever the case, the Red Terror left a lasting legacy. It demonstrated the lengths to which the Bolsheviks were willing to go to maintain power, and it set the tone for a future acts of political violence in Soviet Russia, 
including Stalin's purges in the 1930s. A legacy of fear, the Red Terror was more than a two-year campaign of violence. It was a period that changed Russia forever. The Bolsheviks, in their quest to secure the revolution, unleashed a wave of terror that would haunt the nation for decades. The Cheka's methods, arbitrary arrests, summary executions, and the creation of labor camps became institutionalized forms of control in Soviet Russia. As the revolution gave way to the horrors of civil war, the Red Terror served as a grim reminder of the high price of political power. It was a lesson in how fear can be wielded as a weapon and how revolutions can devour not only their enemies, but also their own ideals.